Hello everyone and welcome back to the Boater Bug Fish Care series uh, where we are talking about setting up, populating, and keeping a uh, fish tank uh, for your home for little fishy friends. Guys, keep it appropriate. No. Male guppy definitely going after female guppy. I think we're going to see the miracle of life. Okay! <laughs> and those are live bearing fish, which I bring up the point because today we're going to talk about types of fish. In the past three episodes, we talked about setting up your tank and everything important and all the science. Finally, we get to talk about the fish that will go into your tank. So, um, Jen, I'm going to let you lead the discussion on this one because you know more about different types of fish than I do. I mainly know about what I've got right here. So, Sure. So, um, we mentioned a little bit last episode about you know starting with a few fish, probably your hardiest fish as well. Um, these zebra danios are an excellent example of that. They're very hardy, they're very cheap as well. Yes. Um, you can usually find them like on sale for a buck a piece yep. at most fish stores. At there's there's a variety of them. There's your standard zebra fish, there's like white zebra fish. Um, the original types of glowfish that came out, if you want to go that route, are zebra danios. Um, and there's leopard yep. danios as well, there's the long fin fancy varieties. Um, they're, but they're, they're hardy, they are... Um, you know, pretty much going to be okay if you didn't perfectly cycle your tank and will be fine in there to maybe help your cycle the last 5%. Again, try to do as much as you can before you put them in, but they'll be a little more forgiving if you make any mistakes. Um, with zebrafish and with a lot of tropical fish, you're going to want to make sure you get a school of them. You don't want to get like, oh, I'm going to yes. get one of these and yes, one of these very and true. one of these. They are happy happiest amongst their own kind. They're happiest in a group, so I think you've got like six to eight of them. I have nine zebrafish right now. I got ten and unfortunately one died. Um, not the one that we were expecting. One, two, four, five, six, you have nine. I did a quick count and I was like, there's about eight there. But, oh, yeah. wow. I, I actually, I usually don't get the chance to do a full census of them, so nine. Yep, they're all yeah. right there. I usually, like, I count five times and I'm like, I think I counted nine one of those times. I think I'm good. Yeah. Um, but the more of them you get, the more... You'll, the more you'll see them because they'll be more likely to come out and they'll be social. socialize. You'll get to see a lot more interesting behaviors. Um, instead of only a couple of them just swimming back and forth, you'll get to see them moving more amongst the group. you get to see them kind of chasing after each other. If you have a really large tank, like mine has 125 gallon, you could easily get like 30 of these little suckers and have a whole shoal of them swimming around, mm -hmm. which is just really cool to see. Um, yeah, I would love to get that at some point. I don't really have the room here, but I, w I would love to see that kind of thing. And yeah. that's why I got the Danios at first, was because I knew that they were that type. Um, let's see, some other fish. There's Tetras. Uh, you yep. see like Neon Tetras, Cardinal Tetras, um, and then... Uh, and the like Tetras share the same kind of body shape as the um, Danios. Danios. Third, like the same like minnow style looking of fish, which danios are minnows, danios, danios, like all yep. danios. Um, they're all like kind of related to the minnow. Um, see, the cardinal tetras, the neon tetras, they're all very similar. You've also got like the hatchet shape, which on top of the picture of a hatchet shaped tetra. Oh, yeah. Boom! Hatchet shape! Um, those are also a pretty hardy fish. Um, you j also you get those in schools. I think they're a little on the ugly side. Don't tell them I said that. So <laughs> I prefer I prefer the slimmer shape of the the Danios and the um, neon tetras. Yeah, I mean, don't be don't be afraid to get things because they look nice as long as you are prepared to take care of them as well. Some like again, especially tetras, Danios are easy to take care of. So if you mm -hmm. get them because they look nice, they should be okay as long as you keep temperature right and such. Right. Um, um, angelfish uh, take a little more care. Um, right. Um, one last note about the, the zebrafish and tetras and stuff, and really any small fish that schools really well, is they're great what's called dither fish. Um, and dither fish act as kind of like a, a relaxing factor in your tank. So if you've got, let's say, some fish that are really skittish, that are really like nervous about coming out all the time, you've got a pack of these zebra danios that are like, oh, life's grand, we like swimming around, things are cool. They're going to be more relaxed because the zebra danios are more relaxed. They're going to see that these fish are okay, they're swimming out and about, there's no harm coming to them, so they're going to be more likely to come out and about. Yep. Um, and to clarify here, what we're talking about first is tropical fish. These are all tropical fish that come from, you know, they might be South America or Malaysia or whatever stuff that's in the tropics, uh, yeah. is what I've got here. Yeah. And most of the time when you're looking at fish is uh, what you're looking at. Don't mind my phone. Um, and then you also mentioned angelfish, which are from South America originally, yep. I believe. Um, they have... Slightly different needs as far as like your water parameters, your hardness and stuff like that. 
They're also more aggressive. Yes, um, and that's that's you, important uh, both within a species and uh, you need to look up between species. Um, right. Will one species be aggressive to another? Um, angelfish, you either get like one in a tank this size. You get one or you get a pair of male, male and female. Um, so in you a tank this size, trouble. yeah, you're going to get a couple of males that are going to sit there and they're going to fight. Um, even your male and your female, when they get to the breeding season, the male will be aggressive. We've had angelfish before, my dad has had angelfish, they've bred, and the male will get aggressive, will attack the female because he's, that's what he does. He's like, hey, I like you! So, that's what they're into. It's very white trash of them. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Um, so, they'll, they'll chase each other If you around. were offended by that joke, maybe stop for a moment and wonder why. <laughs> um... And with something like angelfish, it's important to get a tank that's big enough for them. You yeah. can't really... I wouldn't suggest keeping an angelfish in anything smaller than about a 30-gallon tank. Um, a pair of them are going to be... I would, I would say this, the smallest tank, like unless you're only interested in keeping a couple... I would say the smallest tank you can safely keep is like 29-gallon, I think is the standard size. Right. Um, and that's for, for most fish. Again, you get a few danios, you might be okay at like a 15 or something like that. Right. But Yeah, for your first tank, I wouldn't go any smaller than a 20, personally. Because you're going to be able to have cool, more cool fish in yep. um, a larger tank. Um, let's go through what are some other types, uh, just general types of fish. Um, so the angelfish I mentioned belong to a group of fish called cichlids. Um, they are South American. Most cichlids are actually from Africa and they're characterized by being aggressive to semi-aggressive. Um, angelfish aren't going to be aggressive towards your dither fish like this because they're so much smaller. Um, they're basically like the wrong color and the wrong shape. Your angelfish might be more aggressive to something with really bright colors, really big flashy fins, because it's going to be like, that's someone I'm competing for territory for, competing for food, or even competing for mates. Yep. So it's going to be more aggressive to that type. Um, um, so what are some other kinds? We've got the danios, tetras, cichlids. Um, all over goldfish last. Yeah. Um, so, like bottom fish. Yeah, bottom fish. Those are some of my favorites. Actually, my first email when I was a kid was bottomfishy at hotmail.com, which really shows the age. Do you still use that? Oh, I mean, I don't use it, but I still have it. It's where all my Facebook information gets sent to. Okay. It's really embarrassing. Like, so, uh, do you want me to bleep the second half of that or show the bottom fishy? It's fine. Like a month or two ago, uh, a friend was adding me to something on Facebook. And he's like, I need your Facebook email. And I was just like, oh, God. Um, <laughs> sure. I'll have my have my Facebook email, my hotmail that I had from when I was like twelve. Cool. Um, so those are those are my favorites. Those are also my dad's favorites. Um, so bottom fish. There's um, striped Raphael. There's uh, loaches. Raphaels, which are like they, anything that looks like a catfish, essentially. Yep. There's there's loaches, uh, which dad has a few uh, weather loaches. Yeah, he's got some weather loaches. Yep, which are which are longer, kind of eel like. Um, I have a couple of bristlenose placostomus, um, and I specifically got bristlenose because they will max out four to six inches long. Your common placostomus, you get them in the fish store in their two to three inches. Um, you take them home and you keep them for a few years, and they can be a cubit. <laughs> yeah, don't buy common placostomus. I know there's this myth that pet stores love to perpetuate because pet stores are going to make money, and they'll tell you whatever they can to sell you. That's true. So. Which is also why don't buy a goldfish bowl. Because they're like, oh, you want a goldfish bowl? Here, buy it. That means that you're going to have to come back for more fish when your goldfish die. Ah! Okay, that tangent aside. Um, <laughs> pl anyway, Plagos. Plagosimus, yeah. So buy, make sure you do your original ahead of time, buy one that's the right size for your tank. Yeah, um, um, my uncle got, had one that he had probably a tank similar to this size, and the pleco was easily this long. I want to say it was actually small. It was probably more like this, this okay. long. Yeah, it was still, it was still yeah. a good size. It was a good finger tip to elbow length. Yeah. Colin Pleco that was like 20 something years old. Yeah, so they they get big as they go. If you have a 125 gallon tank, it's probably okay to get a common Pleco. Yeah. But um, if you've got a smaller one, yeah. do do research. Like, well, I'll, if you're looking at a specific kind of, of fish, do research. I did the, the research and found that a bristle nose would be smaller, mm -hmm. and I knew that I didn't want a, a giant in my tank. Mm -hmm. So. Um, bristle nose and any other bristle nose are, are really also really mm. well known. If you have an algae problem, they will eat algae like yep. really really well. Um, they they've been hiding the entire time that we've been doing this, but um, they're a little shy, and especially because we're talking. Other but. similar size fish are rubber lipped plecos. Um, I think that they look cool because a when they're stuck to the side of the tank, they have this weird little pucker shaped mouth. Yep, uh, um, I just saw. Um, they also when I was really in the cool store the other day, the I size. saw gold ring butterfly plecos. 
um, and they almost have like a, a, a ray kind of shape, you know. Uh, but um, I looked at it, they require fast moving water, so I need like a power jet kind of thing for them yep. to really thrive. So it, you know, I did the research, yeah. it wasn't for my tank. There's a there's a lot of really cool, really fancy costumes that are like A, expensive, and B, becoming more readily available over time. Yep. Um, I think the most expensive pleco that I remember looking up was a blue-eyed Placostomus, which is like a regular like, brown, black body Placostomus with bright blue eyes, and they go $5,000. Wow. Yeah. yeah. The average you know, expensive the that I'll see is about 50 bucks. I mean, the bristle nose Plecos that I got were probably the most expensive in my tank at about 8 bucks each. Yeah, 8 or 10 bucks, something like that, depending um, on how big you get them. So that's... Um, I also, and I don't know if you know too much about Corydoras, I had mm -hmm. a couple of Panda Corys when I first started mm -hmm. the tank, and unfortunately, um, they got sick really fast. I don't know if it was something that I did wrong, or if they were just sick at the store when I brought them home. Right. Um, but uh, they are somewhat algae eaters, but also scavengers for uh, what has dropped. Corydoras are kind of like zebra daniels for the bottom of your tank. They're yeah. gregarious, they love swimming around in little packs. If you get only one or two, you're never going to see them. If you get a whole bunch of them, they're going to be like, yay, and swimming yeah. all over the place in little packs. So, um, okay, so moving on, are we on to goldfish now, or did you have... Um, let's Did you have see. anything else for tropical fish? Do I have anything else for tropical fish? Um, there, there are more types. We are generalizing yeah. amazingly. There are literally hundreds of types of fish. Right. Um, if not thousands, um, for freshwater tropical. Um, right. So we're doing some generalizations here and talking about some stuff that you should be on the lookout for. Yeah. So with live bears, they're a little bit different from your regular tropical fish. There, there's four species that are, are generally considered live bears, and that's guppies, Swordtails, mollies, and platys. Right. And those are the most common. I'm sure that there are others, but those are when people yeah. talk about live bears that they talk about. Um, in this tank, we've got uh, a few guppies, a few swordfish, and a platy. Right. In the wild, they have tails. different water parameter needs, but over time, as they've been bred in captivity, you'll find that they'll be totally fine living with a fish like a zebra fish that they would never really naturally inhabit the same water as. That, that's, um, that, yeah, that's something that you'll find with uh, aquarium keeping is that you will have stuff from, again, I think I've got some South America, some Malaysia, some... Do we see, do we see a pleco? Yeah, he's right there. Maybe. He's um, peeking out. Yeah. Um, so, for example, I know like platys generally prefer a little bit more brackish water. Brackish means that there's some salt in the water. It's not salt water, but it's a more salty than regular fresh water. Yeah. Um, but they're, we've never had an issue with platys being just like a plain fresh water tank. Yep. Um, um, however, if you do decide that you want a brackish water tank, that does open up other possibilities as well. Yeah. Um, I know I'm probably going to be getting a couple of uh, mollies to put in here mm -hmm. uh, quite soon. Um, although the tank is uh, pretty full as it is, um, we didn't talk about it with parameters, but there is something to consider called bioload. And the, the rule of thumb, which you can argue about the veracity of, is one gallon per inch of fish. Um, and by that, I'm rather full up here. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, I mean, I'd say you're honestly, I'd say you're probably fine because I always consider like a zebra fish as an inch of fish because they have a very small bio load. Yes, fish. they do. But um, uh, but again, and we're not going to go into the details there. Um, yeah. The stuff with cycling more or less covered that. Just if you want to look it up, yeah. you can. It's, it's a more it's or less... a rule of thumb that the, like, and then you've got like goldfish that people say like, well, it's one inch of fish per ten gallons, for example, because they're yep. so much dirty or poopy or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's generally just kind of like add fish until you think, all right, that's plenty of fish. Like I would say, honestly, if I were you, you could probably double the number of, of this size of fish you've got and be fine. You wouldn't have any issues. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm playing it uh, conservative right now right. and we'll see how they do. Uh, anyway, so that... So live bears. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, live bears, they're, they're distinguished by giving birth to live young called fry as opposed to laying eggs. And they do so a lot. <laughs> All the ones that I have in here, I got for free because Dad has live bears at home. Yeah, we um, have, and saves the fry. He takes a tur turkey baster and goes whoosh, whoosh, into a baby aquarium. Yeah, we have platys, we have swordtails, and we have guppies. And we've had a few health problems because I find that live bears tend to be a little bit more touchy on how well they survive. Yep. Um, so just because, like, over the years, they just kind of become more and more inbred just to get like fancier this colors. Is very true. Or different body shapes or anything like that. Um, um, which is it because you can see like we've got a ton of these red sword tails both at home and here because they're pretty similar to red sword tails from 20 years ago. They haven't changed that much. They're still pretty hardy. Um, yep. Whereas a lot of the guppies that we've got, they're really, really fancy, but they don't live quite as long. 
Yeah. Um, live bearing fish will often try to eat their fry, so if you do not, so if you don't want to worry about babies and adding more fish to your bio load, just leave them alone. Chances are the problem will disappear. Yeah. Um, but if you do want to try raising them, you will need to save them. Again, Dad does the turkey baster into established and cycled uh, baby aquarium. Yeah. Um, the one really nice thing about live bearers is that you do have a much more obvious difference between the male and the female. Um, you have, for example, like with guppies, you've got like the females will have like a relatively plain body and then like kind of a plainly colored tail. This one's a little bit of the exception because she's yeah, got a really fancy. Play, she's got a really pretty dark body. She's scaring her. But you've got <laughs> this male in the back who's bright orange from the tip of his nose all the way to the tip of his tail, and then behind him is a more typical female with like a grayish tan body. Yep. He's currently courting her. If you if you want to uh, get. That's not the one he was chasing before. No, oh. this is a different one. <laughs> you, you ended up kind of lucky because you've got two females and a male. If you had two yeah, males and a female, the live female's going to end up. Live bears strong. generally keep in a one to two male to female ratio, mm -hmm. um, is, is the rule that I've heard about that. Um, and again, the other way to tell, if you can't tell with body type, and especially with the sword, sword tails you might not be able to tell, is that their ventral fin, um, with males it is, you know, detached from the body like this. You know, it's up here, but then there's space. With females, there's, you know, fin the whole yeah, way up. Yeah, it's a fan. Yeah. Um, you also, the sword tails are sword tails because they're the little males have a really long tail. Mollies and plays have a very similar body shape. Um, it's more of a preference as to which one you prefer. Yep. And then guppies come in all different colors. Yep. Um, and again, I'll be getting a couple mollies, so we'll see how they do. Alright, so another kind of fish to talk about is betta fish, or you might pronounce them betta fish, B-E-T-T-A. You will see, like, there will be displays full of these things in, like, a little Tupperware in, Little uh, cuppies. Yeah, like, you go to PetSmart or Petco, like, a chain one will have them like that. And, you know, the, they sell kits for them where you have, like, this tiny little tank for them to go around in, in an exercise ball with a mirror. Um, bettas require more than a uh, chain fish store will let on. Right. Um, so you also hear them called Siamese fighting fish, but basically, right. like you hear a lot of people like, oh, just put them in a little bowl, or oh, put them in this this cute little tank about yay big, it'll be great. And there's this myth that oh, they live in rice paddies in nature, so they're happy with that, you know, a little amount of water, and they're happy with dirtier water, and it's like, well, they live in rice paddies, which are about yay deep and many acres wide. Yeah. So, so you, yeah. you do still need to cycle a tank for them. You need to do all the stuff that we talked yeah. about in the they first need filter, And they need a heater. They are extremely tropical fish. This is true. They right. really like the 80 degree water. Yeah. Um, um, they're they aggr the, the, that is. the big thing that, to know about uh, bed is, is that they are aggressive. Yeah. If you put two males in a tank together, you will not have two males in a tank together. No. Um, you, and there's, you know, like, you mentioned, like, the kits with, like, the little, like, the mirror or whatever, that'll stress them out, you know. Yeah. If you, oh, it gives them exercise. No, he's trying to fight someone that's yeah, not he, there, he's, and he's not succeeding. Yeah. It's, it's very stressful for them. It's very dangerous as they, like, smack in the tank, they'll hurt themselves. It's, if you want to take, like, a cool picture, you know, it's no different than, like, teasing your cat with the laser pointer. But you also don't tease your cat with a laser pointer every hour of every day. Don't do that with, you know, the mirror or whatever. It's not yeah. good for them. Um, and again, so going on that, you might be tempted to drop in a mirror for like half an hour, but that's still, you know, he's yeah. going to smack his head in the thing. Yeah. Um, generally, f you want to keep them, I'd say like a five gallon tank would be like a good average size for one. You know, for one, yeah. It gives them room to swim around because they've got these big, long flowing mm -hmm. fins. And you also don't want to have like a high pressure filter. You want to have something kind of low and slow so it doesn't bother them. Um, well, that's true for anything that's uh, a smaller uh, tank. You don't want a high pressure filter anyway. Right. Well, just for this species in particular, they're used to the slower water. Yes. They don't want to get, you know, jetted around. Whereas, they they like, aren't you've river got fish, this, whereas yeah, um, the Danny Oaks are, are river, river fish. Um, um, well, how, how do bettas do with other fish that aren't bettas? So, it, with, with males, it really depends. Um, if he, if he might, sees this flashy orange guppy, he'd probably get really mad at that. Yeah, he might he might get upset with your brighter guppies. They'd be okay with your deader fish, like your zebras or whatever, something plain, something small. Obviously, never with cichlids. They're just going to sit there and kill each other. Got it. Um, well, hey, look, we've got a little show going. The male was, like, flashing yep. his fins. Um, so, yeah, just if you're going to keep him in a community tank, keep him with very low-key, plain-looking fish. Um, yeah. You can keep females in what's known as a sorority, 
Um, you keep females in probably groups of four or more. I wouldn't go any smaller than four. Um, they'll, they'll still be... Will they still be aggressive? or They'll still be aggressive to a point, but it'll be more spread out. Instead of one, the big one female, you know, being mean to the one or two other fish, if you get like them four or five, you get the aggression kind it's of It's a very democratic bit. aggression then. It's not like a pecking order. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's... Yeah, again, they're called a sorority, so go ahead and, you know, use that image with the stereotypes uh, of, you know, what you see in, you know, the frat house movies kind of thing. Right. And you want to keep those in a, a larger tank, like 20 gallon minimum for a sorority kind of a thing, because as we talked about previously with decorations, it gives them space to, you know, go and kind of like, I mean, I picked on them over here for a while, sort of a thing. True. True. Um, and something I forgot to mention with the males is a sign of a happy, healthy male will be a bubble nest, which is he'll actually like, yeah, it's how they breed, is he'll like spit up little bubbles in the corner of the tank and it makes this big little bubble thing and then the female will come and lay eggs in it and then he'll make the eggs fertile. But if even without a female present, they'll do it because they're happy and healthy and that's just what they do. Interesting. Um, they will do best in a, and again, like you don't want to keep them in a bowl. And they will live for years. They're not like, oh, I'll have it for a year and then it'll be it. No, they'll live for, you know, three or five years, I mm -hmm. want to say. So. A lot of fish will live longer than you might expect. Danios can live a few years. Again, we've already went over plecos can live decades. Yeah. I have, currently I have two goldfish and a pleco. Um, so the goldfish that you got, um, there's a few different ways to get goldfish. So I want you, and again, goldfish are what a lot of people will get. Um, so tell me about, a little bit about the care of goldfish, which is different with them from tropical ones. And then like, one of them would start out as a feeder goldfish, right? Yeah, so, um, goldfish require probably less care than the average tropical fish because they're so much more hardy, but they do require more cleaning. You can probably get away with not cleaning your tank, or, like, once a month you can probably just clean it and you'll be fine. You really won't have an issue. I sometimes have algae issues, so I do clean it, you know, every couple days, but, yeah, if I slack on that, they'll be okay. Yeah. Um, that goes out. Whereas goldfish, they're so dirty that I clean mine just about every weekend. Um, also because again, I have the same with poop sits on top. Sorry about yep. your previous episode. Yeah. Um, but I've got a plain orange goldfish, and he's about probably oh, yay big right now. He's pretty big, pretty fat. Um, mm -hmm. And he, yeah, a, an ex-boyfriend bought him and another fish as a feeder goldfish, and they were like, hey, we're gonna have these as pet fish because it's like five cents. So if it dies, I'm only out five cents. Well, he grew and he grew and he grew, and he's was then he was in like a, I think it's a five gallon tank about you know yay big, and he grew too big for that, so I put him in a tank, a twenty nine gallon tank with you know two other goldfish, and then they grew up as well, and then the one as I said got sick and died, so now I have the two of them in a larger. It's like a thirty three, right? No, it's a forty something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's bigger. Yeah, it's it's more column one. There's more room up and down, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting because they like to swim up and down more, right? Um. I really don't know so much with goldfish. There are some fish, like the angelfish, definitely having a vertical, vertical tank is good. Um, a lot of your bottom fish, you're going to want to have a larger footprint, so you're going to want to have a wider tank instead. Um, like, yep. loaches prefer the, the wider tank style. Um, and then I have the pleco in there. Plecos also are really hardy. They're not cold water fish, but they can deal with cold water just fine. Yep. I actually do keep my goldfish a little warmer. So you say, say cold water, water what, what temperature do you keep yours at? Because you are kind of splitting the difference between the, the goldfish temperature and the pleco temperature. Somewhere around 70. Okay. Um, and again, goldfish are totally fine with that. Like, you don't want to get it up to 80, but between like 65 and 70 is fine. Um, plecos generally prefer 70 to 80, so... Yeah, there's, there's a range, and... Um, you can go on to what I've used before is called aquadvisor.com and I will link to this calculator below. But it basically you put in what fish you want to get or what fish you have and it tells you what the pH range should be considering here's a range for one fish, here's a range for another fish. It'll tell you this range in the middle. Same with temperature ranges. Um, and again, it's just all about the research. Yep. And then I currently have goldfish, but for my regular tropical fish tanks, the setup that I generally prefer, which I was going to say a little while ago, is I like to have one or two like showcase fish. So like oh, yeah. let's say like an angel fish or um, some other kind of a cichlid or like a ram. Yes, yeah, something that's a little bit bigger, a little bit more standout, pretty kind of thing. And then you've got like a school or two schools in a tank this size of smaller, you know, your dither fish. And then you've got your cleanup crew on the bottom, whether it's your quarries or your loaches or plecos or whatever. Yep. 
And uh, again, to note, your cleanup crew, do make sure to specifically feed them as well. They won't always live off the scraps, mm -hmm. so you do need to feed them, but yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll talk more about feeding tomorrow, but um, it is something to, to keep an eye on too. Will, will you need to get different foods for your different type of fish? Mm -hmm. Um, when you get them, you know, compatibility, it's kind of crossing over, so. Um, anything else? Or are we about ready to wrap up this really long episode? But again, this is the middle, of, this is Wednesday, this is the middle of the week, this is the one that you wanted to hear about, you get different types of fish, so I think it was okay that we took longer on this yeah. one. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, um, give us a, a thumbs up. You can subscribe down below, please leave a comment, let us know uh, what fish you have, or what fish you're thinking of getting. And um, at least for a little while, we'll be able to check the comments and give you some feedback concerning, you know, if you're thinking of starting a tank and you have a couple that you're thinking about, definitely let us know. And, um, you know, we're not experts. Let me say that right now. <laughs> we are experienced to, to a point. We are not experts. Um, so take everything we say with a grain of salt or fresh water. Um, but, um, yeah, by all means, <laughs> please leave a comment down below. Let us know what you've got in your tank and what you're thinking of getting. Uh, I'd love to hear it. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.com slash BoaterBug, and support me on Patreon.com slash BoaterBug. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a good one, and we'll see you tomorrow when it comes time to talk about the food. Not the fish. The food for the fish. See you then. <laughs>